Hey, what's up, guys? Welcome back to another amazing podcast here with Ultimate Appeal. Let's talk about it. Again, like we always promise, we're always on the hunt to bring in some of the hottest content creators out there to just come in, sit down, chat with us, and just kind of learn something fresh and new about them that we just had no idea. Again, of course, we always see what they want us to see from their social media page, but of course, that's their brand. So, of course, that's that, that rightfully so. So, without further ado, a good friend of ours, we've had an opportunity. You guys have seen some content that he's done with us once before. We had to get him back. We had to get him back to sit down, come in, and just chop it up with us. We always have great conversations just in leisure. So, without further ado, please introduce yourself to First off, thank you so much. Thank you. I feel so wow. <laughs> I am Memphis Strokes. Um, if you um, are on Twitter, Memphis Strokes X. Um, or you can call me Marcus. Either. Sure. Well, okay. All right. So now is Twitter your only, do you have like an IG or anything <laughs> that you want to? Sorry, share? now you're opening up the story. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I do content, mm -hmm. porn, whatever you want to call it, I. I'm still very compartmentalized. I have every social media outlet, but Twitter is the only um, site that I am Memphis Strokes on. Okay. On every on no other no other social media site do I talk about it, do I acknowledge it, or do I even post about it? I don't. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. So what's the IG page? My yeah. IG page is. The letter N, mm -hmm. it, to win it, 42. Okay. In it to win it, 42. Two. It and I made it when I was 42 four. years old. Okay. Yeah. But if you go to my IG, two different people. That's my, that was my next two question. Two totally different people. Mm -hmm. Two totally different people. Now, if you went to Facebook versus Twitter, oh my God, you will see a lot of my who I am as a person outside of content. Okay. And that's family and church. Okay. All right. <laughs> which has which has kind of controlled who I was up until about five years ago. In what way? Elaborate. How how did it control? Well, I was I married a woman because of it. Mm -hmm. Um I have always been only attracted to men. However, when I was 19, my family kind of found out in a roundabout way because I went to a gay club mm -hmm. and a friend of the family was there and told my family. And so they had, my family had a, 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 a intervention mm -hmm. where they were like crying and praying. And <laughs> And so I felt in that moment that I could not tell them I was gay. So I told them it was a situation where I had met friends at college. They invited me to a club. I had no idea what the club was. And I, was, I told them that I was not gay. So once I told them I wasn't gay, I felt I had to follow up with that with my life choices so that I could prove to them that what I told them was true. Right. And so I got married when I graduated college. Mm -hmm. And I was married for 21 years. Any kids? I do. I have one daughter. She's 29. And she's by my ex-wife. Um, and she has a seven-year-old son. Okay. Grandpa. Okay, that's cute. <laughs> so, so after that time frame in your life, we're going to kind of skip ahead here. Mm -hmm. So after going through the marriage and everything, when was the quote unquote coming out? So, my coming out was forced and not choice. Mm. Okay, so in March of 2019, my wife at that time moved out and we separated not because of anything sexual. It was just that we had, during our marriage, we were both working towards becoming professionals. We, we got it. We, we had gone to school to get more degrees. And so we kind of grew apart. Mm -hmm. And so she decided that if we were no longer in the same place we were when, when we met, 
why still be together? You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? Because we were both in different places at that time. Mm -hmm. And so she moved out. Didn't tell me. One day we woke up. We were in the bathroom with the heads in her sink. We're brushing our teeth. We're getting dressed. I thought we were both going to work. I went to work. She went to get two movers on a truck. <laughs> 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 yes, yes. I came, I came home from work to an empty house. Wow. She had moved out. But here's the thing, though. She and I had had a conversation some years before this that if she ever left again, because she had this thing that she would get so mad and she would go home to her mom during the marriage. And so I would, I would, you know, go get her and bring her back home. And oh, baby, I'm sorry, blah blah blah. So I, I had told her the previous time, if you ever did that again, I'm not coming back to get you, and it's gonna be final. Mm -hmm. So she knew that that time was gonna be final. Okay. So she had gotten her own house, furniture, everything without me knowing anything. Wow. Mm -hmm. Oh okay. yes. Oh yes. She done everything. And so um, I came home, house was empty. She left a few things around the house and I figured she did that so she'd have a reason to come back into the house later. I said, no, I'm not gonna do it. I rounded it all up. I put it in the garage and told her she had a certain day and time to come and get it. Mm -hmm. She came and got it. At that point we were separated. Now, I don't think she was intending to divorce. But a few weeks after she left, I decided, okay, this is the perfect time for me to be me now. I'm at, at that point, I was 43 years old. Okay. 43. So from birth to 43, I never had the chance to be me. This is my first opportunity to be me. But it wasn't supposed to be publicized. <laughs> <laughs> I talked to a friend. A friend told me about the app Jack. I got on Jacked, and I met this guy on Jacked. Now, so by me being married for the past 20-something years, I knew, I wasn't into the culture of the LGBTQ world, mm -hmm. okay? Yeah. So, you know, there were certain things that I did not know. Mm -hmm. So I didn't know that the guy that I was meeting was a huge content creator. I didn't know it. Mm -hmm. I didn't, at that time, I didn't even know Twitter allowed pornography or sex or nudity on the site. Mm -hmm. All of my followers on Twitter at that time were family, church, and work. Mm -hmm. So I went to, to meet this guy, and he had another person there with him. So it was a threesome. For the life of me, I cannot remember if I agreed to being recorded or if I knew he was recording. I cannot remember. I probably didn't give a fuck at, at that moment because I didn't know it could be publicized. So I probably agreed to it and thought they would just use it in their leisure time. Mm -hmm. For their personal use. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One day, about a month later, I was at work and my best friend called me and said, um, do you know you're on Twitter? And you are fucking down. <laughs> and I said, me on Twitter? Fucking no. <laughs> I, 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 then, then, he's like, then he told me, he's like, yes, and it's on your page. I didn't even know that if the person tagged you, that it goes to your page. I had no none of that knowledge. So I went, I was like, oh! <laughs> so I worked, I, I left work immediately, and I blocked everybody that was following me at that time because they were family and friends in church. Mm -hmm. Overnight, from that video, I got thousands of followers. Okay. So I figured, hmm, <laughs> let me see <laughs> what this can become. Mm -hmm. So I would do simple things like going to the bathroom at work and play with my dick, or just like be in the be at home and just play my dick, just little simple stuff, mm -hmm. and it was it would just go viral, and so that's what became who I am today. So the, the so did the, 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 the Memphis Stroke name birth out of so, you know, from that experience? No, no, I was about to ask. So <laughs> at that time. My Twitter name was still my government name. Which Whoa. Yes. Whoa. Yes. Which Okay. It was I so Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and so somewhere in that snowball effect, 
I figured, you know what, I need to do at least a couple of actual studio porn scenes mm -hmm. to get that exposure as well. Okay. So I worked with, I have only worked with one studio porn company and that was Dog Pound USA. Y'all remember Dog Pound USA? Yeah, okay, yeah, so I, I worked with Dog Pound USA. And the guy who was recording it told me, he was like, you need to stop using your real name and create a name. And he created Memphis Struggle for me. Okay. And right. so I just adopted it. I let him create it and I took it on and that's how it started. So once again, I didn't make up any of this shit. <laughs> <laughs> it just came to me. It just happened. It just happened and I let it happen. So you started it around, I guess, 2019? Yeah. Okay, so yeah. started around 2019. Yeah, right before COVID, when, just when, um, there was another site that used to allow um, nudity and it stopped. What was it? Um, Tumblr? Tumblr. Mm. Tumblr stopped. Right. Tumblr, Twitter, Tumblr yeah. stopped. Right. And Twitter started. Mm -hmm. So yeah. that was right around the time mm -hmm. where Tumblr stopped and Twitter started. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I was in there and it was really big. And so the numbers were going really, really hard, really, really fast. Mm -hmm. And that's and that was the time I got in, in 2019. Mm. Okay. Nice, yeah. All right. <laughs> it, just, it just all happened. It just all happened, and I'm just living in the moment. So what were you thinking in your head? Like, you're just like, okay, I'm just going to just, it's out there, it's there. Like you just said, I, I guess you were in the mindset of, let me just see where this is going to go. And so. Just ran with it. So there were like about three people in my head at that time, okay? You know, I think Beyonce said it best when she talked about her alter ego, Sasha Fierce. Mm -hmm. There's, there was me, and there are these two different egos. Me, I'm a church boy. I was, I've been a minister of music, director of the choir, praise dancer, pastor A. I was that guy up until this time. Um, and then there was this alter ego that always wanted to do what I'm doing now, but was always afraid to do it. There was one time when I was married, I asked my wife if I could do a porn scene. <laughs> and how did that go? <laughs> she said, hell no. You know, of course, she said no. And so when, when she said no, I tapered it again. Okay. It was something I did not think I would ever do again. That, but there was always this alter ego of me that wanted to be that person. And so when when that first video hit, that alter ego kind of like woke up. It just woke up. It gave it, fuel. It, it gave it some fuel. And I have not been able to put that person back to sleep again. Because it, I guess it was sleep for so long. Mm -hmm. Now it got the opportunity to be present and to be first, mm -hmm. you know, and, but it's still fighting with the real me, mm -hmm. even until today, it, I'm still fighting between those two people. Mm -hmm. And it depends on the situation, the environment, the day, as to who I am. So you mentioned work, you mentioned college, so now do you still work other than doing content creator so is content creating your okay. full-time job now? so for the first i've been doing this about five and a half years mm -hmm. okay for the first three years i worked and did content okay, okay? so i told you i started in 2019 right mm -hmm. so COVID hit right in 2020 mm -hmm. right yeah. so when so from 2019 to when COVID hit in 2020 I was doing a little small stuff at work or at home. When COVID hit, I'm a clinical psychologist, licensed LPC with a PhD, okay? <laughs> I never thought outside, so that's the other piece of me. I'm a, I, was, I was a professional, right. professional yeah. people where people trusted me with their lives. They came and laid right. on my couch and told me their stories and their lives, and I helped them make it through it and decide what life is going to be for them all at all the same time. I'm three different people. I'm this professional person. I'm this um, family church person, and I'm this person that's doing content mm -hmm. on the side. Mm -hmm. 
And so then when like COVID hit, I worked from home. I saw people for therapy sessions. So me working from home meant I saw them through the computer. Mm -hmm. So I could do that from anywhere. Right. So I used that time to travel and make content while everybody else was locked up in the house. I was going to different cities making content and still working and seeing my patients because I did my own scheduling. So I scheduled my patients to see for work, and I scheduled my content to do. So I would just do it as I needed it. Mm -hmm. And I did that for three years. And at some point, and but all throughout those three years, there was always that fear of somebody getting mad <laughs> and reporting me oh. to not only my job, but to the state licensing board. Okay. So once I got to the point that I could survive off of content alone, I stopped working, which was December the 6th, 2021. Mm -hmm. December the 6th, 2021 was the last day I worked a job. Okay. And that was because I had gotten to the point to where I felt I could financially survive off of content, content alone. alone. Mm -hmm. and, I, and I stopped working and have not worked since. But it's not, to me, I mean, I guess it sounds more like a smart decision to, mm -hmm. to say. I mean, because mm -hmm. then you're still taking the risk of being reported mm -hmm. to lose that job. Mm -hmm. I mean, so financially, it makes sense to be like, okay, well, yeah. if this is going to be the breadwinner, then it's been breadwinner, we'll let the, mm -hmm. the other things go. So yeah. now, I'll be 49 years old in December. Mm -hmm. I'll be 49 in December. So at that age, I should be thinking about retirement, right? So well, now, look at me. I mean, <laughs> I mean <laughs> you know, thinking about what life is going to be afterward. And, however, at this point, the content I've done is never going to go away. True. And you know, I'm a very, I do a lot of research. You know what I'm saying? I do. I research things, and so I've seen a whole lot of guys who have done really well in porn or content, and when that ride is over, they have nothing to fall back on. Mm -hmm. So my fall back on would be the professional mm -hmm. me, which could still be affected yeah, absolutely. by this time. Yeah, absolutely. So that would that would scare me and worry me if I stayed in that in that thought long enough. But I try I try not not to think about it. I said, luckily there are enough pills, honey, <laughs> to, sustain. <laughs> to sustain me to where I can make enough that I can make it to uh, where I can get a government check. Like, no, sixty three, ain't it? Ain't it sixty three? Um, no, I think it's like 67. So, think about it. That's like 18 years from now, for me. Even though it seems like I'm old, that's a long time. What am I going to do for 18 years? I cannot do content for 18 years. 18 more years. Seven years for me. <laughs> I trade with you, my dude. I trade with you, I promise you. Because I don't, I don't know what my life is. I, I don't know. I don't know. So, okay. So, so you kind of... I guess it leads me to the question now is, I guess you, like you just said, you don't know what what's next after after this. It's scary. I don't. I wish I could have a plan. Do you have a timeline where you say, okay, I want to stop doing content creating at this particular time, so to kind of formulate a plan? And no. So, so let me rephrase that question. There's a number of pills. So enough, let me. <laughs> there's enough pills. There's enough honey to keep let me going. Let me rephrase that question <laughs> and ask you, so you can hear how it sounds okay. when I hear it. Okay? okay. Do you see yourself sitting, planning to go back to work when, in this part of your life that you waited forty something years for, all you gotta do is lay on your couch all day? Mm -hmm watch TV, mm -hmm. money rolls in every week, mm -hmm. you have sex, 
And that's one of the biggest things in your life, so you enjoy doing it. Mm -hmm. So you do it as you please, you do it when you want to do it, you do it how you want to do it, and now you have to think about going, letting all that go and going back to a job. Mm -hmm. To work for the man, <laughs> waiting, on a, <laughs> waiting on a check every two weeks. I'm not doing that. That's not going to be enough yeah, I'm not to pay that. your bills. No. And then by the time you get that check, you're already a week in that you borrowed on it. You know, we live that life. Right. Mm -hmm. So thinking about going back to, to that, I mean, yeah, nah. Nah. <laughs> no. So I'm gonna I'm gonna do whatever I can do if I gotta if my dick stop working my ass will <laughs> that part that part or my mouth or something <laughs> something to work so do, so do you see the other facets because you are you are a brand right right right, you, right. we are all we all are brands right right, right. so do you see other facets a part of Memphis Strokes brand that can be that lucrative multiple sources of income. Yes. Um, besides just the content, like the yes. other things yes. out there. Yes. You think. For example, y'all doing a podcast. That's that's an extension mm -hmm. of your brand. Fat right. Rabbit Killer has the clothing line. Right. He has the dildos. Right. Um, there are people that do you know other things in addition to, and I'm doing those things now. Okay. However. It's one of those things that's easier said than done. You know, because you have to put work into those things that are sidelined at the moment, mm -hmm. but which may become your supportive income, which may become your primary income. Mm -hmm. It's easier said than done. Oh, yeah. It takes work, it takes time, it takes energy. And so there's a, there's a secret that I need to tell y'all about me. And once I tell you this secret, you're gonna see, oh, I've never made a major decision for my life on my own. I never made a decision. To get married to a woman was not my decision. That was my family's decision. To do content was not my decision. That was Twitter's decision. <laughs> so everything that I've, I've never made that major decision in my life on my own. So to sit down and think of those alternatives after this is over is very hard for me. Mm -hmm. Unfathomable right now. Or, yeah, okay. I just can't. I, I don't know. I don't know what to do. All I've known to do is to work. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I can't think of anything else. So it will probably be uh, the pattern of life to me, is from what it sounds like to me, is that you're just you allow life to just kind of happen. And mm -hmm. so whatever, I guess the best way, I guess to answer as the person interviewing you, I guess, you know, you'll, you'll figure out what that thing will be when it shows up. It, in will, other words. it will figure me it'll, out. It'll figure you out. Yes, 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 yes. yes. Okay. yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So I always like to ask this. So is there any content creator out there that you haven't worked with it yet that you would, oh. that you are just dying to work with? Hmm. Um, hmm. So, first off, I'm horrible with names. Okay? So even if there were, even if there was, I wouldn't be able to recite to recite his name. Oh, okay. Um, but I, yes, oh yes, Swirly. Have y'all heard of Swirly? He's this young kid, um, dark skinned, with a real big old dick. But he's versed in his videos. His name is Swirly. He um, he's young, but he's a real big kid. See, y'all are just like me. Like we have our little few names that <laughs> all we know. I know, right? And we I have to look up Swirly. Swirly. I mean, I've seen him on social media. He's He's recently done some work with um, another person I would want to do work with, which is um, Raheem. Okay. But I know Raheem. I've met Raheem more than once. We've just never been in the situation to do... To make it happen. To make it happen. Okay. Yeah. Okay. But those... That's two people okay. out of the list. <laughs> Usually... So, I try... I don't want to be 
caught up or entangled in the whole Twitter thing. I'm too old <laughs> to be in that whole going back and forth and fighting and all that stuff. Right. So I have to keep my own boundaries. I have to manage my own self. So I don't indulge in learning too many people. What I do is I will decide to like visit a city and usually when I visit a city, a client is bringing me to that city. Mm -hmm. So I am maximizing that opportunity to make content as well. Right. So when I'm going to a city, I will research, I, then I'll look through Twitter to find people that are in that city to collab with and I will directly yeah, yeah, inbox yeah, yeah. them. Yeah. And that's and that's it. Other than that, and but me doing that, I miss some good possible collabs. I miss some possible good people because I didn't know of them. But that's just the way I do it. I don't know any other way. So, do you feel like after all this time that you've kind of been doing content, you you can really check off the list? Like, you know, I've really been able to collab with a good number of people that. Oh, totally. Like, totally. Yes. So I can say, oh, you know, I've, I've got a good resume of content creators that are just as popular oh, yeah. as I am. So I've, been able, able I've, I've learned from doing content that it's a whole society of its own. True. I'm learning. And sometimes it can be overwhelming, overbearing, and too much. Mm -hmm. You know, and there are groups within it. There are, um, <laughs> it, it, it's, it's a whole lot. Um, I have learned that the bigger you are in the content world, the more it opens you up to possibilities of collabs. Mm -hmm. So luckily, I've done this long enough, been consistent enough, have the numbers to where I have collabed with some people I never would have imagined meeting. Mm -hmm. And that I also know that if my numbers at that time were considerably lower than they were, I still wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. But I, I try to be that person that gives those people <coughs> the opportunity mm -hmm. because somebody gave me the opportunity. Right. You know, I only got to where I am because I collab with certain people. Mm -hmm. You True. know, and it should be that kind of environment. Mm -hmm. I give back because somebody gave into me. Mm -hmm. That's true. But it's but it's not always the case. Yeah. It's not always the case. And, and this is the thing people that don't do content don't know. We have to deal with that and those people. Yes. And, <laughs> and we get just as heartbroken as some of the fans do. Because we reach out to some of the same people that the fans reach out to, right. and they don't respond to us either. Right. <laughs> right. Or they tell right. us no. Right. Or I've had a guy to tell me, I, I've had more than one person tell me that I'm not the type of person that they do content with. When I, and so I told you, I'm, I'm a researcher. Mm -hmm. I'm going to your Twitter page. Mm -hmm. Wait, 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 wait. <laughs> wait. <laughs> so you did this and you went through me. <laughs> right. And, but there yeah. are other factors that may have made them say that mm -hmm. that I have no idea. That's true. That's and true. I have to accept that. That's very true. I receive rejection just like anybody else. Right. There's so many content creators out there, so. Yeah, 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 Till you, you, you're a fine one. Just keep looking, just mm -hmm. keep, just, and be open mm -hmm. to whoever. Be, because, you know, also, some of my best videos have been the ones I thought wouldn't do well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's yeah, true. Yeah, yeah. So, so, what are some of your biggest fetishes? So, oh my God. And what won't you do? So this may sound crazy, but I don't have any fetishes, okay? Backstory, I told you I was a very religious, I grew up in the church. Mm -hmm. Very, very religious, very, very Pentecostal, mm -hmm. very, very strict, world. very, very rigid. Mm -hmm. I grew up, even until the age of 43, oral sex was a sin. Mm -hmm. The woman I was married to for 20 some years, we never had oral sex. So I had become conditioned right. to not needing it. Mm -hmm. All we did was missionary. <laughs> and missionary. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> there was, there was, there was, <laughs> it was, it was out. 
No, you better not. You know, like, when we first <laughs> married, I did do oral sex on her in hopes that she would return the favor to me. Right. She didn't. So after two or three times, I was like, well, I ain't gonna eat that nasty <laughs> thing. I don't even want it. Why would I put my mouth on it? You ain't gonna do it to me. So I stopped. <laughs> I'm not gonna put my mouth on that. You ain't gonna eat it. At least, no. So I stopped. And so I didn't do oral sex for a long time. So, you know, you're, you know, you are what you do. That's true. You know, yeah. so I didn't need it. I didn't, my sex was very, very rigid. And also, this was late 90s, early 2000s. Okay. So this was when shit was going on. Medication was not what it is now. True. People living was not like it is now. Right. So I was afraid of being that person that my wife called me one day and said, hey, you gave me. Mm -hmm. So even when, if, if I, even when I stepped out on her, it had to be so restricted until I couldn't do it then. You know, so I didn't for over 20 something years. So now I have to force myself to do it in videos. But I'm a guy that, I'm a, I'm a Capricorn. So we're gonna make it happen. So even though I don't do oral sex on a regular basis as myself, mm -hmm. I'm gonna do it in my videos because I know people wanna see it. Right. But that's for them and not for Right, me. that's for the business. That's what it right, is, right, but yeah. for me, it's just get your dick hard. Your dick better be hard when it's time for sex. Put it in and start going. <laughs> yeah. No, no, no intimacy. So, have you been asked to perform any certain crazy fetishes from? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, or, I mean, we live in a time where like, fetishes are, you know. What was one of the craziest ones that you can think of? I think pee or. Water sports. Yeah. yeah, the water sports, or even what's the term for it? Of, I'm not saying shit, but scat. what? Scatting. Yeah. And like, I've been asked, um, I just don't think I could perform. Because I don't think, I, I know, I, I don't think I, I don't think I could do it. So I tell them no. And those people I usually don't even meet. Yeah. Because I feel they're still going to want it when I meet them. And I don't think I could do it. Now, there was this one time I was having a threesome with this couple. <laughs> <laughs> Not y'all, but this other couple. And, <laughs> and we were all, I mean, we were you know, having sex. I was the top for the, for the both. I was the top for the, for the two of them. So it wasn't y'all, okay? And so I had, to, I, I had to pee in the midst of us having sex. And so I was like, hey, can I go to the bathroom? One of the two guys showed me to the bathroom. So I'm standing there to pee. I'm like, why is this thing at the door waiting on me? I know my way back. Like, <laughs> and once I started peeing, he walked over to me and put my dick in his mouth and swallowed every drop of piss that came out of my dick. It was hot, but gross at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, you just swallowed my pee. Like, uh. and, and you know, the thing about it is that people assume that because you do content, you're just open to any and everything. Right. Right. You know, they just, no. that's not the case. Not the case. case. No. And, and we're not, you know, we're not knocking anybody for that. Right. You, you do, do what you do. do what you do, everything. And I Without may do what you get for the right time or the right day, yeah. you know, but. No, I, no, all of us don't do, yeah. no. You ain't gonna catch me on that time. No, no, no. <laughs> I don't eat, I don't eat ass. Um, I have, you know, if it was that moment and that person, and I knew that person wanted it, and they fit the criteria that got me to the point of wanting to do it, mm -hmm. I'll do it, mm -hmm. but it got to be, because I am a person of smell. <laughs> and a lot of guys don't don't know how to shower properly. They don't. I'm big on smell. So if I get close to there, I'm <laughs> I can't do it. And I don't know how people do it. I don't know. I don't. Yeah. Yeah. Big on smell. Any you have anything else before we close out?
Mm. Whatever you want to ask. No, I think that's about it. <laughs> that's it. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Do the time goes by. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. You have anything else to ask? Oh, I come up with stuff to ask. Hey, I mean, I am open. Like, I I live my life in secrecy for so long until I vowed that I would never live live in that in that matter that, ever again. That can I think we all can relate to that if you. If you had the life of coming out later in life, mm-hmm. you know, um, I think we all can mm-hmm. sit and relate to that. Yeah. And, and another part of what you said earlier, you know, like living, you, there are three, these three facets of you. Mm-hmm. I think all of us got a little bit of something. Yes. That, this is me. This is me. Mm-hmm. And this is me also. Mm-hmm. And and the, the, the everyday waves of life is figure out all three of those people in one person. Yes. You know? Yes. And being able to kind of feed that person to yes. a degree to be healthy at the same time yes. too. Yes. You know, because it's like you you suppress you can suppress one side of your life for so long mm-hmm. that it's not healthy for this other side. Mm-hmm. And it's it it could just take a turmoil mm-hmm. of whirlwinds mm-hmm. in, in life. Huh. So I, yeah, you hit a you hit a nail on that one right there. Which sure. is the which is another big thing that onlookers to people that do content think that we're just this heavily sexual person we will fuck any and everybody oh my god and we will yes. you know what i'm like saying you want everybody that you go to a club but it's like oh my god I, I or even if we just get the club just to have fun i'm not here look listen i'm not here on that right. well i don't i don't want to leave with anybody I don't even want to talk about it. Let's just enjoy it. Then I'll go home and I'll never know who you are again. Yeah. You know, but they think that they every think, time we're yes, out and about. Out for, that, that's yeah. What I'm, I'm no, for. I just came to dance. Yeah. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> I just came to dance. I, I came to dance with my husband. Yeah. Just have a good time with, yeah. No, yeah. That, that is so, so true. Yes. I think we've seen that numerous times when we go out. I'm mm-hmm. like, I'm not into you. I, I, I know you over there trying hard to get my husband. Uh, you know, you walk, you follow him to the to bathroom. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, well, okay, now, bitch, I'm gonna have to cut you. Yeah, because yeah, because, you know because, because, you, because yeah, because that's mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that's the mindset that they, they create. That's yeah. what they see, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. You know, yeah. and that's not us. That's not you. Every 24 hours a day. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No, this is this is our brand. This is a part of our business that we do, and that's it. It's work. It's, it's, it's work. work. Mm-hmm. And just like they, when they get off work at 5 o'clock, they leave that at work, and they, they become themselves Absolutely. with the same way. With the same way. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That, I agree with you 100. So very true. So very true. Well, cool. Well, we could we could keep this going. I know. Um, <laughs> I, you know, I have to say, not that because he's here, but um, with meeting Memphis the first time we met him, I think we sat in... The hotel and talked for almost 40 minutes alone just yeah. talking to him. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, we love that about you. Thank you, know, you. Just, I, I love that about you're, you. You're an approachable, and that's another thing too. You are as as big as you are in what you do. Um, I find that you're a very approachable person. Yes. Yes. There's mm-hmm. some people that's in this content world. Oh and yes. we're new at coming. You've been in this world, right. so you probably yeah. know really what we're saying. Yes. Yeah. We are you know, the movies. Yeah. Yes. And very unapproachable. Yeah. Oh, yes. They have very very unapproachable. Yeah. That they're now above hum- humanity because they have sex on camera. I try, I tell myself that I want to be the Cardi B of content. Because Cardi B is that person, I feel that if I saw her in the mall, I could walk up to her and say, Cardi! She said, hey! Yeah. You know? Right. I want to be that person. I don't, I don't want to be somebody that people don't feel they can walk up to me and speak mm-hmm. or they can, you know, acknowledge that they know me. Like, no, I'm cool. As, as, as long as you know how far to go, as long as you know, you know, I'm cool. I mean, That's do true. it. I'm approachable. Yeah. Say hello. Yes. Yeah. You're a fan. I mean, hello. Okay. I mean, we appreciate cool. you supporting. So say yes. Right. <laughs> or see him out. Say hello. Well, man, we appreciate the time for coming okay. in. Um, did you want to let any of the fans know? Like, do we have anything? I know you've got some new stuff coming up. Anything that you want to let us know about that's coming out here in the next? So I'm a very I'm a, I'm a pretty consistent guy. I 
post weekly on Twitter and my fans page and my just for fans page. So I'm always coming out with something. Who am I coming out with next or the week after that? I have no idea. <laughs> but coming soon. <laughs> coming soon. <laughs> I told you I love couples. So <laughs> this is always, this is always, oh my God, two. I mean, two for the price of one. <laughs> I'll take it. You take that bargain. I'll take that bargain. Take that yeah. Take that yeah. Well, again, guys, we appreciate it. Thanks for coming in and checking us out for the podcast. Like I always say, don't just hit the heart button, hit the retweet button, because again, that definitely shows your support to yes. that favorite content creator that yes. you follow and of course you know always subscribing to their their pages um, viewing their content that definitely shows your support so again follow us on our ultimate appeal page on twitter also follow our musclemaster.info page which is our website that you can go online you definitely can book private personal massages um, with us as well, you know, and, and let me just put this out too, that we can I'd say it instead of, I always put it um, in replies, um, with our massage content, um, that is strictly something that we do with other content creators. When it comes to our actual paying clients, there is absolutely no videoing recording that's done with our paid clients that come in that just want a place to come in and escape get a really relaxing massage because we do give a full relaxing real massage um, during our sessions so just so that you guys know that when we do content content is done with individuals like this professional here that we do our content with but when it comes to our paying clients for massages there is absolutely again no recording or video and done um, when it comes to that so again guys have a good night thanks for joining us and we'll be back again with another amazing content creator that we can sit down and chop it up with and learn some new stuff about all right Thank Peace you. Out, guys. Peace.